Never before. Seem like never before. Oh, my soul. I worship your holy name. I worship name. your holy name. The sun comes up. The sun comes up. It's a new it's day. It's a new day dawning. It's time to sing. Your song again, whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the evening comes. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord, oh my soul. Oh Worship your holy name. Seems like never before. Oh, my soul. I worship your holy name. Bless the Lord, oh, my soul. Bless the Lord. Worship your holy name. Seems, seems like never before. Oh, my soul. I worship your holy 
1 and 2. Good morning, church. Welcome to Beacon of Hope Fellowship, to our home going of our brother, Reggie Henneke. On behalf of the family of Reggie Henneke, I wish to thank each and every one of you for being here today. And I know that it's a very difficult time for them, but I believe that as I'm going to minister about God's love, that it will really help us and it will take us through the course of this journey. So welcome once again. I also want to encourage you with Psalm 46 from 1 to 3, where it says, God is our refuge and our strength, our very present help in, in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, even though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, and though its waters roar and be troubled, and though the mountains shake with its swells. It says here in Romans 8 and verse 35 to 39, Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will tribulations or distress or persecutions or famine or nakedness or pearls or sworn? It says in 37, But in all these things, we overwhelmingly overcome through him who loves us. The last verse in 38 of encouragement to the family today says, For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor heights, nor death, nor any other created things will be able to, to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. I'm happy to say that our brother died in Christ. I said I'm happy to say that our brother died in Christ. He knew the Lord Jesus Christ as his personal Savior. And so I would like us just to stand and I would like to open up in prayer before we start. Can every, each and every person stand in the presence of God? Dear Heavenly Father, we, we are gathered here today to remember the precious life of our brother Reggie Henniker. We are also gathered to say goodbye for the last time and to celebrate the life and enjoy, that he enjoyed here on earth. And we wish to thank you for each and every precious moment and every memory that we have had with him. His life was touched by so many people in so many different ways. We pray that your peace and your presence will be upon us during this time. And we pray this in the mighty name of Jesus. And everyone say, Amen and Amen. We're going to start with our first. Um, we're going to sing all the, 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 the songs or the hymns that our brother loved. And so we're going to honor that today. It's a thousand, a, a thousand reasons. It's bless the Lord, O my soul, and all, and worship His holy name. We worship You, Lord. We worship You, Lord. Bless the Lord, and bless the Lord, O my soul. Your holy name. Your 
you praise the Lord? You may be seated this morning in the presence of God as we call upon Roshain, I think it's Roshain Henika to do the tribute this morning. Roshain to do the tribute. Is she here? Is the person here? heart of gold. He is home with his parents and early departed siblings. Uncle Reggie was a kind, gentle, and humble man. He was the quiet one, unlike his Krivelika twin brother. Throughout his life, he touched so many lives with his selfless, countless acts of kindness. Uncle Reggie's first job was as a driver for an elite cab company in Woodstock, after which he worked for a Dr. Kesso in Simonstown. This is where he met the love of his life, Sandra Martins, in 1976. They later married in 1981. And over the years, they had six beautiful children. Priscilla, who has passed on, Samantha, Fabian, Theodore, Bradley, and Dominic. And he graciously raised his stepson, Ricardo, with a warm and loving heart. Together with his wife, he also reared many more children, nephews and nieces. Yet another example of his kind and warm heart. He also worked at Classic Automotors in Woodstock. And in his later years, he worked at KPG Media, until his retirement. He was a devoted husband to his wife, Sandra, a loving father to his children, and an adoring grandpa to his 13 grandchildren. And when he could, he loved seeing his siblings. Uncle Reggie loved taking his children on outings, to the beach, the Cape Town Gardens, to the Esterplatz shows, and the annual trips to town to see the lights. So many memories fill our hearts with the dearest of dearest Uncle Reggie. Gone too soon, but he has left us with a beautiful legacy in his children. Samantha, Fabian, Theodore, Bradley and Dominique. Rest in peace in the arms of the angels as they carry you to heaven. We miss you dearly. My dear cousins, I will leave you with this poem today. If we could write a story, it would be the greatest ever told of a kind and loving man who had a heart of gold we could write a million pages, but still be unable to say just how much we miss him. Each and every day, Samantha, Fabian, Theodore, Bradley and Dominique, you all will remember 
all your dad has taught you. You'll be hurt and be in pain, but don't be sad because he'll always send you the answers and he will always, always be your dad. Thank you for the honor. We'll stand again and we will sing. We give life and thereafter we'll have the special items by Bradley, Theo and Jamie Lee Henica. All together or separate? Okay, in whichever order. We give life. Mm. You give Once again, you give life. You give life. You are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. You restore. You restore every heart that is broken. Great are you, Lord. It's your prayer. Your breath in our life, so we pour out our praise, pour out our praise. It's your breath in our life, so we pour out our praise, pour out it's your breath, your breath in our life, so we pour out our praise, pour out our praise. It's your breath. your breath, Lord. 
It's your breath that we breathe. Today we are grateful that we could breathe. We are so thankful and mindful. We honor you, Lord, and we give you praise in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. Alleen bij Kavad. Ik was nog wel op die programma, maar iets wat ik wil deel, met allemaal wat die is, speciaal met die familie. Een dag voor mijn pa afsterf, ik ken het goed te nou, dat is op een maandag, het ik voor die eerste keer met mijn familie naar huis gezien, met vrouw en die kinders, een meeting gehad. Ons het zieke meer als een uur gepraat, En wat ik gedeel het met hulle, was oor die liewe wat ik gehad het, hoe ons groot geraak het, hoe dinge vir ons ge gegie was, en die type mens waar hy uitgekom het. Wat ik ook gedeel het met hulle is, sê hier het gedag, en morgen is het die meedaan nie. Kon weten wat die volgende dag, wat ik in my pa sien nie. En ik denk dat het vrede in mijn hart gemaakt, omdat ik kon deel met mijn kennis, wat ik ook geleerd van mijn pa. En iets wat ik ook wel zeg is, dat is groot vrede in mijn hart, because ik en mijn pa het nog nooit een argument gehad, zo so groot is ik is, ik is nog nooit geschiedde. Ons het nog nooit vuist geslik he. Ek weet nie hoeveel ander kinders is daar buiten, wat nie so op pad gehaar het he. Maar vir my, het was een voorheer gewees, om te weet, dat ons het niks gehad, voor ons een paar jy gescheid het, wat ons nie uitgesoot het he. So die wat nog oor is, Moor is gevorm as niemand. So as iets zwaar hang, moet jy het onmiddellik zijn. Bekos ek kan sien, ek gaat klom hartsie uitbring. Bekos die tyd wat jy gehaar het, jy het nie gebruik van gemaakt he. En gister aan vraag ek vir die heren, gee my net kracht en maak my steek, vir dag en is wonderlik oor het week bekoos ek kon nog nie tot op die minuut een traan stort nie maar die aan wat ek op die toneel kom en sien het ek net gesê jyre, laat die wil geskiet en ek breek af Ons is niks wat ons kon doen nie. Al wat ek kon sê is, jyre, laat die wil geskiet. Al, dankie. Hi, um, good day. Ek het een baie klein poem geskryf. Maar voor ek die poem uh, gaan doen, I just want to read a uh, uh, Bible verse uit the book of Matthew. Uh, 
And the reason why I chose this uh, verse, this chapter, is when Jesus talks about the walk we should walk. But when I give you a list, it like me Jesus, it may pa get described. He must, he must do Jesus, which basically may pa get muted to. Um, Book of Matthew. Matthew 5 and verse 3. Okay. God blesses those who are poor and realize they need for him. For the kingdom of heaven is theirs. God blesses those who mourn for they shall be comforted. God bless those who are humble for they will inherit the whole earth. God blesses those who hunger and thirst for his justice, for they will be satisfied. God bless those who are merciful, for they will be shown mercy. God blesses those whose hearts are pure, for they will see God. God blesses those who walk for peace, for they will be called children of God. God blesses those who are persecuted for doing right, for theirs are the kingdom of heaven. And... Yeah, let us straight from the poem. It's a very short poem. Um, it's basically a, a description of my path. My father, Reggie, General Henneke, love for my mom, his wife, children, and grandchildren was precious than the most expensive pearls and diamonds. He spoke volumes in his silence. Three sons, two daughters, 13 grandkids. We all can agree that he was a man of peace. His accent spreads, his kindness healed. Whether you were a friend, family, gangster, or draggy, he always made sure that not a soul goes hungry. When he had plenty or even no money. Some knew him as very wise, very quiet, very funny. And I agree, he was all of that. I remember when his hair turns gray, he would wear a cap. But when he didn't wear a cap, that means he colored his hair black. <laughs> he, liked his, he liked his long walks in the park while randomly cleaning the parks. He was a short man with a giant heart. I know he's in heaven, not because he's my father or because Jesus is my Lord, but because he lived out the perfect will of God. Yes, clear. Amen. Uh, morning, everyone. <coughs> it's so uh, amazing the past few weeks, the ball up to this all happening. I work at a, a shelter for the homeless. <coughs> and a few weeks ago, two weeks or three weeks, weekends ago, I had to stand in a grave and I had to address the family. And now I'm standing next to my dad in the coffin. <coughs> and one thing that I mentioned to this family was, we mustn't wait for a special occasion. Being alive right now is the special occasion. And then, before this incident happened, I spoke to my mom a few weeks ago, and I asked them, Mommy, Mommy, as Mommy and Daddy in the funeral policy. And we said stuff, and I, I, I told them, I said, wait, when is it going to Sonder om te weet, my, my pa is het daar, is net die langs, is kom nog, net die voor ons. But it's so amazing how God has prepared our heart, my heart specifically. But then also on the other side, I see the enemy want to derail us, derail our focus. So for my family, just stay focused in Christ. Because sometimes as it would go up, we must hear why God, and we ask a lot of questions. But it's important that we take all the good value of my dad. It's the value that I get is priceless. And we cope ahead with that. So I'm going to start with my, <coughs> my spoken word. It's, uh, it's 
a mix of my dad's reflection, what he reflected to me, and the time we shared together. And die is gain. The unique rhythm of your heartbeat, chanted actions speak louder than words. You impacted the Beacon Valley community without saying much. Taking care of God's creation, feeding the hunger, picking up papers, pushing bins, and delivering newspapers. If the world only had more people like you, this beautiful pain, bruises, and scars. To love is Christ and die is gain. In our daily existence, have no confidence in your flesh. Sowing in the flesh will reap distraction. Sowing in the spirit will reap everlasting life. With the kings of kings singing in the heavenlies, Holy, holy are you, Lord God Almighty. How we engage in challenges and trials will truly define who we are. My dad reflected love, gentleness, humility through it all. I thank God for your life you had blessed us with until we meet again.
Daddy. Good morning, everyone. There is so much to say about Power AG. But I have a short poem to say. A grandfather just like you. I just want to let you know you mean the world to me. Only art as dear as yours would give so unselfishly the many things you've done all the times that you were there. Help me know deep down inside how much you really care. Even though I might not say I appreciate all you do, richly blessed is how I feel having a grandfather just like you. Before we minister God's word, can we all rise and let us sing, let your living waters flow over my soul, let your Holy Spirit come and take control of every situation that has troubled my mind, all my cares and burdens unto you I roll. Let your loving waters flow over my soul. Let your Holy Spirit come and take control of every situation that has troubled my mind. Oh, my cares and
Come now, Holy Spirit. Come now, Holy Spirit, and take. of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you. Let it be that lamp, my God, that will light up the path. We thank you, Lord, that you're going to speak to us and that you carry us through. Your promises is yea and amen. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that will lead us and guide us into all truth. In the precious name of Jesus. You may be seated in the presence of God as a given. A short thought. The loss of a loved one is probably the most difficult time in life. And we all know that, that grief is never comfortable for any of us today. And sometimes we, it seems unbearable that we're standing here this morning and we know that he is the comforter. Without Jesus, we cannot get through these things, through these times as we go. But I believe that, I want to say that Jesus is the healer. He will heal those wounds. He will heal your grief. He will heal your sorrow. And he will also heal that pain. The Bible doesn't say, does not, um, doesn't say that we must not grieve. But it actually says that weeping endures for a night, but joy comes in the morning. And it might hurt for a season, for a, for a little while. But God will be with us through this. Because he says in his word, I will never leave you nor forsake you. This morning I'm saying this not just being cold because I've experienced that I've also lost a father and a mother. And through those things and through those difficult times, it was reaching out to Jesus, the comforter, that I could stand here today and say, yes, that he, this word is true. The Bible says that Jesus, a man of sorrow, he was acquainted with grief. I'm also confident that in our own ways at the time like this that we are experiencing, we all need the same thing. We need that comfort. We need the rest. We need the hope. We need the strength. We need the peace. And all of these things are found in Jesus. Jesus said, I have come to bind up the brokenhearted. And to comfort all who mourn. He also says, as a father comforts her child, so I will comfort you. So God understands our sorrow and, and, uh, and, and, and understands the loss of someone that, that you've loved this morning. He knows what it's like to lose a loved one. But he does, he does more than just understand. He also shares in our sorrows, and he will bear that sorrow with us if we will allow him to do that this morning. And two, 
just encourage you there is a scripture in the Bible where he speaks to us and he wants to show us that love, if only we will allow him to do this this morning, him to do this this morning. And it's found in John chapter 11 where we find that moving, uh, that moving story of, of three siblings, which is Martha, Mary, and Lazarus. And in this passage, we, or in the story, we will see that, that, that what they cling to. When we had the memorial service on Thursday, that the minute or the people that, that spoke about, they touched on this. And they also highlight things that stood out for them in this chapter, in this, in John 11. But this morning, once again, God wants to highlight also another significant thing about this, this story about the three siblings that moved the hand of God. In this passage where, where Mary and Martha are in the heat of the moment, in other words, their little brother's life was on the line. And the Bible puts it this way in John chapter 11 from 1 to 5. And when we read it in the New King James Version, he says, Now a certain man was sick, Lazarus of, of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was that, that Mary who anointed the Lord with fragrant oil and wiped his feet with their hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. And therefore the sister sent to him saying, and this is what gripped my heart, this is what stands out. Because they knew God, they had a relationship with Him. And this morning we can learn from this and be encouraged by this. It's, it's, um, and, and sent Him and saying, Lord, behold, He whom you love is sick. So when Jesus heard that, He said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So besides the disciple, you will see, besides the disciples, Mary, Martha, and Lazarus were perhaps Jesus' best friend. When we read the Bible, whenever he passed that way, there was one house that was always, would always welcome him was this house where Mary, Martha, and Lazarus stayed. So you could see that, that, they, that Jesus deeply loved them. And in the story, Lazarus is on the doorstep of death. And Mary and Martha, true to form, are speaking on behalf of their brother Lazarus. They needed to get God's attention. They have one shot convincing God to come. They need, he needed to come and they need to get that best argument that will allow God to leave whatever he's doing to come and to attend to their need. So they wrote a note to Jesus. And it was had to be good because their brother's life depended on it. It was in the heat of the moment and they were thinking about not being polite maybe, not being um, civil or worldly that we really believe is about to be revealed. And so the question that was asked, how are they going to appeal to Jesus? Because they needed his attention. He was always busy. What will, they, what will their plea be to Jesus to get him over to, to their place? Now I believe that as we were sitting here and as our minds are starting to wander, I'm sure that we would write and we would say, Lord, we were always good to you. Whenever you came around to our place, we made you feel comfortable. Lazarus was, he's a good person. He followed you all the way. Isn't that what we would maybe put on the note to attract him? Jesus, that Lazarus admired you. He do not deserve to die. We need you to come over. Not Mary and Martha. You know what they did? Because they knew what moved Jesus. 
It was in the text that we read. They knew what moved Jesus. Lord, the one you love is sick. Lord, the one you love is sick. That was the realization that welled up from deep within the hearts. Lord, the one you love is sick. They knew that Jesus loved Lazarus. And it wasn't their love for Jesus or Lazarus' love or his good deed that moved Jesus. It was his own love that motivated him. It was his own desire to bless and to heal and to restore. So the story goes on and says that Jesus responded to Mary and Martha's request and he went to their home. But by the time he arrived, Lazarus was dead. And Jesus responded to her and Jesus says this in John 11 and verse 25 where he says, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he died. Now you see, that is the promise. And even to some of us, maybe that sitting here, that promise is too great for us to understand or to hope for. But I'm here to declare and say that every promise in the book, every promise in the Bible is true. It's yea and amen. Not that moves God. You know, what moves God is His Son. What moves God is His love. And the message that Mary and Martha sent was a plea. This message that they sent to Jesus was a prayer. And this, this morning, we can learn that we and bring that understanding and that revelation if it's something that we need to take that God really loves us whatever you know what if we want to move God is to tell him about his love for us we all know that the that the devil comes to rob to steal and to destroy John 10:10 10, 10. There's so many questions asked about our brother this morning. So many questions. But there's one thing that you need to understand this morning. It's this love of Jesus this morning. The devil comes to rob, to steal, and to destroy. And in letter part it says, but he comes. To give life in abundance. The message was a plea. Notice the basis of their prayer. The prayer that they, the request that they sent him. That they knew would move him. The one you love. The one you love. Maybe you are thinking, I don't really know the Lord this morning. I'm, I'm not a true follower of him. I'm not right or, or I'm not as, as, as committed as Mary and Martha. I believe that this prayer or this request, nobody is an outsider when we pray this to the Lord. It's on the basis of his love, not ours. Not our love. It, when we pray this prayer, it's on the basis of his love, not our love for him. We have no idea how profound his love is really for us this morning. No matter who we are this morning, no matter what you need trying to pray this prayer, I pray that, that your heart erupts this morning with, with an understanding and a revelation of his amazing love for each and every person. Here this morning. He is the one that loves us. He's the one that wants to take care of our needs this morning. The things that we are going through this morning. The question is, what is the focus of the Bible, you might ask? 
What is the focus of the Bible? Man loving God or God loving man? Man loving God or God loving man? If we spend time in the Bible, when you read that, we would, we would discover that, that it is overwhelming about God's love for us. And in fact, God's love created our, uh, our love. God's love is extraordinary. It's, it's, uh, uh, um, it, it's so inexplicable that, that he loved us before, before we, we were us. That is how... Ex- that is what his love is all about. He loved us before we exist. He knew many of us, even though his love was before we even exist. He even knew many of us would reject him. He even knew that many of us will hate him. He even knew that many of us will even curse him. Even will rebel against him. Yet, he chose to love us. God's love, God's love us because He is love. So this message is clear this morning. The gospel, the gospel is about God loving man, whether we respond to Him or not. He never changes. We are going through so many things in life, and we are asking, "Is there God?" And once again. He's speaking to us, speaking to the family. He says, I'm the same. I've never changed. I still love you. An unending love. Even though whatever you're going through, I still love you. And so, John, in John chapter 1, 1 John 4 and verse 19, he spells it out so clearly. He says, We love him because he first loved us. And I believe this love we cannot, uh, um, um, I've never met a person who inflated God's love, never, because it's impossible. He loved us first. He loves us best. And he will love us forever. How does he love me? This morning, you know, we will spend the rest of our life counting the ways of how God loves us. In other words, I believe what God is saying here, this, what he wants us and the message that you want to leave to the family as we are going over to the other side, to lay your father, to lay your husband, to lay our friend, to rest. He says, man, I want you to understand this love I have for you. The legacy that our brother left behind. It's wonderful testimonies that that we've heard. Let us understand that this he's done it because of the love he experienced. And tonight today, I have prayed this prayer for the family. That request, Lord, the one you love, be with this family in times of sorrow, in grief, where they are searching for answers. I'm ending off, and I like this verse because I know that my brother is in Christ. He lived in Christ. He dying in Christ, and he will rise in Christ. When my father passed, passed on, This was a text that always stayed within my mind. And it really comforted me. It really brought about that hope to understand the love of God. The one who loved each and every one of us. Thessalonians 4 and verse 16 to 17. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. With the voice of the archangel. And with the triumph of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. It was even on his tombstone. Had a tombstone, and that was the scripture that was engraved on the tombstone. 
the dead in Christ. And that's the confidence. That was the faith we had. That was his life. And I believe likewise with our brother. That he will rise. And you know even Paul was saying comfort. And I'm comforting the family with these words this morning. That the dead in Christ shall rise first. And in verse 17. Then we which are alive. Remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. And I pray that these words, these encouragements will ring and will edify you, not only edify you, but bring about that hope again to know that we will one day see him if we are in Christ. In Christ. In Christ. In Christ. I want you to bow your head this, your head this morning. And just reflect on those words. Lord, in this time, we thank you for our salvation. We thank you for what you are doing. This morning we are reminded about your unending love. This morning I pray, Lord, the one you love. I believe that you, you are moved once again, like with Martha and Mary. You're not a respect of a person. But as we move on now, to finally lay our brother to, lay, to rest, that we are encouraged that the peace of God will be upon us. That we have that revelation of your word now. That he who began a good work within our brother's life is faithful and you completed it. We that are behind, we are that left behind. I pray in Jesus' name that we'll, we'll be strengthened and we'll be focused and we'll keep the faith in the mighty name of Jesus. We bless your holy name. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Are we going to you? I want to give... Just a request that we're going to play the last song, and you may be, be seated. We're going to open up just for the immediate family, just to have the to view it for the last time. And when that's done, and then we move from here and we go to the clip cemetery, and then we will your final goodbye there. So if you could do that, if you could just play that music, um, if you could open up, and then the pallbearers could get ready after the song that is played, and then we'll go, we'll go out swiftly.
the name, he's the name, he's the name above all names, and you are worthy of praise, then my heart will see how great. He's a name.